Today, I will be playing a guy who is in the top 5 highest ranked opponents that I have ever played against. And Glads, this is the most fun that I've ever had playing a match in my entire career. Roll the animation. What's up Glads and welcome back to Gladiators Tennis. My name is Grisha and you're watching Gladiators on Tour. For those who don't know what Gladiators on Tour is, I will leave the links to parts 1 and 2 of this season up over there so maybe go check it out but in short this is a series where I take Glads with me to professional tournaments all around the world and uh, this time it just happens to be very close to my house in Barcelona I'm playing a UTR against who's probably the toughest opponent of the entire tournament not just uh, my group his highest ATP ranking was like 500 in the world and his UTR is like a 13.92 so yeah a very interesting and tough match is ahead of us and uh, I think that's it let's go Glads morning of round two playing a guy that's like 13.92 UTR or something I'm probably already said it but I'm gonna say it once again um, definitely gonna be a tough match we'll, we'll see what happens I decided to take the sexy car this time because I know you guys like it I do everything for the glads and uh, I can't really complain oh we're out of gas I decided to risk it and not go to the gas station because uh, I'm a risky man and I didn't really have any time to waste. As soon as I got to the club, I went to the gym to do my usual warm-up. That consists of first warming up my lower body by running around and doing all types of rotational exercises and then warming up the upper body by doing this little exercise that I'm doing right now. Picked up my freshly strong racket and filled my body with potassium by consuming two Bananas. Time to head out to the courts. Glad's at the courts waiting for the ref. Should be coming anytime. People playing. It looks like it might start raining. Hopefully it doesn't. We'll see. Oh, Glad's, before we start the match, if you would like to receive the most recent updates on Gladiator's Tennis, first of all, obviously, subscribe. I think like 70% of you guys watching are actually not subscribed to the channel. Why? <laughs> also, if you would like to find out when and where I'm playing these matches to actually watch me live, uh, follow Gladiator Tennis on Instagram. Here's here's that page. And also, if you would like to know a little bit more about my personal life, here's here's my personal Instagram. I think that is it. And uh, let's start the show. So yeah, whenever you play against someone with a way higher ranking than you, you always expect something crazy, insane serving speeds or unusual stability and precision. But quite often the difference between you and them might not even be that noticeable when we talk purely tennis. But as we know, tennis is a very mental game and as we learned even here in the series of Gladiators on Tour, it's not always the better shots that win the matches, but rather the right behavior and decision making at certain crucial moments. And the guys that are 14 UTR are usually 14 UTR for a reason and if you don't notice anything crazy in their game it's probably in their head all of this analysis was an intro to nothing because in the case of my opponent today his forehand was super precise and quite lethal if he had the comfortable shot and his serve also turned out to be very hard to return although not crazy fast but the white first serve was just super annoying so yeah there wasn't really anything to hide and i knew that plus to all that there was the mental side of things having had a pretty tough first game on my serve i managed to take it and prepare to fight for a break but breaking a good server in the beginning of the match with relatively new balls is never easy so one all it is and i'm serving once again right away i could tell that his forehand was the better shot as he would very often slice when he received a somewhat uncomfortable back and then even when he did have the back and shot the damage wasn't as noticeable as when it came to his forehand side. That's a pretty good scenario for me as the backhand is the better shot in my case, yet he still managed to somehow go around and take the dominance in the point almost every time. Plus, like it often happens with good players, when you crucially need a shot that you maybe don't usually put in, they get together and nail it like with that previous backhand down the line winner. Up until here, Agea, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his surname right, wasn't really doing anything out of this world to get those breakpoints. He was just being stable, avoiding the shots that he doesn't like and taking advantage of those that he can control well, slowly dragging me into making that unforced error and I just kept making very slight long mistakes that honestly, if those shots were going in, like if my string was just 
half a kilo tighter, you probably wouldn't be seeing those breaks and rather just a quick 2-1 in my favor. Because come on, what are those outs? Nevertheless, we're 2-1 but with a breakdown and I have to start looking for solutions. Oh my god, another out that is so small that you can't even be sure that it was actually out. I'm 30 love down and I'm kind of thinking to myself, just let yourself go. It might help you play better. And it kind of did. I did two really good returns in a row. And then he proved to also be a human being by making this very, very unforced error at 30-15. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that the Empire for today's match was the same guy from the previous video. So yeah, be ready for some ridiculous calls. And there goes my first breakpoint in the match and honestly I played quite well on this breakpoint. There were no tactical mistakes or rush decisions but as you know these guys put in extra gear during those crucial moments so he managed to save that break and get back to a comfortable score. Oh there we go this point. Here you can clearly see that this shot was way out. I couldn't really hold it so I kind of called it out and uh, here you can see me apologizing because I thought that I called it at the same time with the ref. Turns out he just didn't see it. It. so he didn't call anything and therefore we're not replaying the point the point just goes to my opponent nice I managed to save that game point, which kind of should have been a break point and then a game point for me. But anyways, with a missile return, I actually managed to get that break point for myself either way. From that point on, we just kept going back and forth with advantages falling on both sides. But then thanks to another tiny long out, I lose the chance to break him back right away. Here on this shot, you can see me making sure that he saw the ball out because uh, at this point I am not trusting anyone. But although I did end up taking the point, I once again screwed up at 30 all and uh, was break point down once more. Gotta work on those points under pressure because unlike most people who get super tense at those moments, I get too relaxed and that's not good either. I loosen up my concentration and I end up rushing the decisions and making stupid unforced errors or ending up in the situation where my opponent has all the shots and all the directions cleared up for him to just finish the point, which usually doesn't happen at like 15 all. Oof, what was that? But we're still 5-1 down. And now for some unknown reason, I decide to play the quickest game of the match on my serve, taking it with four powerful serves that he couldn't even return. Like, why not win every game like that? So it's 5-2 and I know what you're thinking, nah, there's no chance. But you know how tough it is to close a set even if you're winning easily? This is usually where players lose it a little bit even if they've been consistent throughout the entire set. So knowing all that, I knew that I would have to fight this game out and then we'll see what happens, you never know. The guys served really well but my return was just on point every single time. I think I haven't missed a single return on that game, which is honestly quite impressive. So after getting to a 30 all and exchanging several advantages, this point comes. As you can probably tell by my reaction in those pretty tense moments, I am really enjoying this match. I'm not too sure why the score is not changing, but here the advantage is for a gay. I go to the net, dig that volley from down there. He tries to lob me and oh my god, what was that baby? Another set point, another net approach. He tries to do the lob once again and this time I don't reach and he takes the first set home. So, Glads, yes, the first set kind of flew by, I only managed to get somewhat the hang of the game closer to the end of the set, but it really wasn't enough to actually manage to come back, so it went by quite quickly, but I definitely know what to do for the second set, but 
I will use this opportunity in the break to uh, remind you that if there's absolutely anything tennis related that you would like to get, the link to get that anything is down in the description below together with our exclusive discount code that will help you save some money and uh, help the channel grow. Definitely check it out, but now let's get back to the second set. All right, Glad, set numero dos. And this is the set that made me think of the title of this episode as I was just having so much fun playing it. I wish I felt this way every single match that I played. I started off really well with a good serve and a forehand winner to seal the first point and I actually continued playing decently well. But for some reason I still ended up with a break point down in the first freaking game of the second set. I knew that losing this one was not an option so I decided to play like an adult and uh, just holding the ball in the rally until I get an actually good opportunity to attack but that wasn't even needed as he made the mistake before I had to force him. Having fought that through, I immediately switched the point of the game to my side and then this happened. Oh my god, like, are you serious? Why does it have to happen on like a break point or a game point? If only you knew the things that were going through my head right now. I was already drinking water on the changeover in my head when I saw that bounce. But there we are at 40 all again. I still managed to take that game and I can only imagine what would have happened if I didn't. But let's leave those predictions out as now we got a break. He starts with his famous first wide serve that I confidently crush into the fence but then things get quite complicated for my opponent. This game ended up stretching to like 7 minutes, but then on yet another breakpoint opportunity, yep, a double fall, and the first time in the match I'm leading with a break. Alright, Glads, now comes what is probably in my top 10 highlights of my entire career. Are you ready? running passing shot tweener from like the other side of the court that actually touched the net and even if it didn't touch the net the guy probably wouldn't be able to react but still whoa anyways let's not get too excited but one thing i gotta say for sure is that my new head gravity pro exetic has been really growing on me more and more over these last few months like the stability and the feel that the racket offers me is just making me fall in love with it every time i start to play i decided to mention it now because i clearly remember thinking about it during this particular point and yeah, Glads, you got that right. I sealed the game with an ace to go 3-love up in the set. 3-love is actually a very dangerous score, especially if it's a 3-love with only one break, as you kind of feel like you have a huge advantage in the set, but in fact, it's still just one break. Could have easily been a 2-1 if you started receiving. Yet, a 3-love feels very different, and that can definitely play with one's head in a bad way. Don't get me wrong, I was very aware of that being a dangerous score and I knew that I couldn't lift the foot off the gas pedal, but it sometimes just seemed like his car just had a few more horsepower when he was flooring it. As to me, it seemed like I was doing everything right, but he kept having a slight edge over on most of the points starting from 3 love. The very tight shots were landing on the lines and the overall game became quite a bit deeper than usual.
and he once again gets that break point and it seems like he's just a little small step ahead of me on this point and uh, and now the break advantage that I had is just a thing in the past. He then plays a wonderful game on his serve, serving several unreturnable serves, and uh, here you can't really blame me. The serves were actually good. Okay, Daniel Medvedev could probably return them, but we're not in the final of the US Open, so, you know. By the way, oh my god, have you seen the semi-final against Alcaraz? What was that? I'm just so happy that Daniel is in the final. The odds in that match were very much against him, yet he totally went through. Anyways, I got slightly carried away, but what I was going to say is that when you're coming back on the score like Egea is doing right now, after you've neutralized the score, the momentum that you've gained doing it often carries you through to winning a couple more games or even the set. Plus, in this case, your opponent is also not in the best possible mood or scenario and it almost becomes easier to play the point while you're losing and kind of recovering than doing so being scared to lose the advantage that you've gained in the beginning. Anyways, it's been too long since I've argued with the Empire, so yeah, this serve was very, very clearly out. The mark is on the floor, but there's nothing I can do about it. I just mark it and tell him that, yeah, you, you messed up. At least it isn't a match point, you know? Another really well-served game by Gay, and uh, he's returning for the set. Okay guys, this match point. Lads, if only you knew my pain at that moment. Having a smash to come from two match points down and I do that. Oh my god. Alright, this time a uh, post-match interview is, is a must. Uh, guys, I mean I lost. Uh, the score was 6-2, 6-3 as you know. Uh, nothing insane in terms of score, but honestly, I'm quite happy with the way I played. Didn't hold mentally well enough. That's that's definitely for sure. But uh, but you know that's that's what I'm talking about. Like that, that's what I like about UTRs is that yesterday was kind of like a match that you know I didn't play too well. Wasn't feeling good. Ended up with like a pretty pretty nasty feeling. But then Tuesday and I'm playing a guy who is like way higher ranked. You know, way better player, right on paper at least. And, and I'm feeling so much better, right? Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm quite happy with, uh, with the match. Uh, sucks that I lost, but, uh, but you know, that, that, it just sort of gives you confidence in your own tennis when, when, you know, when you play like that against players who are high ranked. So, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow, you know? We will see what happens tomorrow, but for now, I will go to the shower and then to the spa to help my body recover quicker in the ice room and then stretch to feel fresh for tomorrow. So Glad's done with the icing. Now stretching a little bit because my muscles are quite sore and uh, tomorrow I'm playing again and the day after I'm playing again, so I gotta recover well. Uh, but yeah, this is probably the end of the video, but back to the studio. 
So back to the studio it is. Glads, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Gladiators on Tour. Definitely stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Yes, there's quite a few. And actually, in the next one, something really unexpected happened during the match that, uh, that I'm sure you will love. I won't spoil it for you so that you stay somewhat excited. And uh, yeah, for now, I'm checking out and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>